Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll show you guys how to use Adobe Photoshop with XP Paint Tablet. Now, in order to use Adobe Photoshop with XP Paint Tablet, you're going to need a PS user configurations file. This file will allow you to deselect Windows Ink when using Adobe Photoshop. We want to deselect this Windows Ink so that we can avoid further interference between your operating system and your software. Now, if I will open Adobe Photoshop, I can show you what happens when we have Windows Ink selected. With Windows Ink selected, you'll be able to use the paint brush inside your Adobe Photoshop. If you go into your brush settings, dynamics, and then select paint pressure, you see that with Windows Ink, you can use the paint pressure inside your Photoshop. But since we want to deselect these Windows Inks, the paint pressure inside your Photoshop will be automatically selected as well. You see, we no longer can use the print pressure inside the Photoshop, but we don't want that. We want to disable Windows Ink at the same time be able to use print pressure inside Photoshop. That's why you're going to need the PS using configuration file. I will leave this file on the description below so that you can download it. And once you have downloaded the file, you can go ahead and install it. To install this file is very simple. You just go into your this PC, Windows C, and locate user, and then locate your username, update, locate roaming, and Adobe, locate Adobe Photoshop. Here I'm using Adobe Photoshop 2020. Open your Adobe Photoshop 20 folder, and locate for Adobe Photoshop settings. Then open your PS user configuration file, and then drag the PS configuration test into your Adobe Photoshop 2020 settings. And that's it. The file is already installed. It. You can close your Photoshop. And then you can reopen your Photoshop. Now, once you have your Photoshop open, you can test it out for the paint brush is working. We can go to your brush settings. And then you can go to dynamic, print pressure. And now you can see that your print pressure is working again. We have our Windows Ink deselected, but our print pressure is working again. Now that we have the print pressure working, let's take a look at the XP Paint application interface. On the interface, on the top bar, we have indicating which tablet we're using. In my case, I'm using the Echo 3. On the left side, we have paint settings. And here you can assign different functions to each bottom on the pane. You can assign for the top bottom. You can click on this panel where it says right click and you can select one of these functions. You can do the same to the other bottom. You can click on here and you can assign one of these functions. Down below we have pin pressure sensitivity. In this panel here, you can adjust the pin pressure sensitivity by dragging this curve around. If you drag the curve down, it's going to make it much uh, easier for you to create thin, thin curves by pressing hard on your keyboard. If you go softer, it's going to make it much uh, easier for you to create thin uh, lines by pressing very light. So you just can adjust it here according to your preferences. You can do the same by dragging this bar down or up. Down below, the pain pressure sensitivity, we have a coherent pain pressure, which highlight which level of your pain pressure is current available. And then on the next spinal, we have a mouse mode in which we can select between absolute mode and relative mode. Absolute mode simply means that you have precision and that your tip on your pen is going to match your cursor on your screen. This way is easier for painters. That way you can actually match whatever your cursor is with the tip on your pen and makes it easier for you to paint. So then you, you can have more precision that way. Relative mode it allows you to use your pen as a mouse or as a touchpad for your computer. But uh, when you select relative mode, you can adjust manually on how fast and how slow you want your cursor to behave on your screen. Now, in this mode, there are certain, uh, certain limitations, like you, you cannot enable or disable Windows Ink. And sometimes, because of your, your pen working as a mouse, 
your software such as Adobe Photoshop will now recognize your pen as a pen. So it will deselect the pen pressure and other activities that uh, other benefits that you would have otherwise with the pen uh, with the pen tablet. So if you want to paint, you want precision, you choose a absolute mode. If you just want to use your pen as a mouse, then you choose relative mode. Um, on this logo right here, you're going to enable uh, is a button that enables the XP Pen website. So if you click on it, it's going to direct you to XP Pen website. Uh, I don't want to do that right now. Um, next, we're going to the right side of this interface. We have the working area. Here on the working area, we have a monitor primary. Here you can toggle between different screens or monitors that you use at the moment. On next to it, you have custom display mapping. This, this, this options allows you to map um, your tablet into a determinate area on your screen. That way it makes your tablet affecting only the area on your screen. So if you click custom display mapping, there will be this red arrow indicating so that you can drag this arrow and select the area in which you want to uh, be affected. So in this case, I'm going to be affecting all in this area. I cannot do anything beside this area. So if I try to go outside these parameters, I'm not going to be able to. So let's go ahead and try to go back to full screen and then primary. And here, when this, this big screen, it simply allows you uh, where your uh, display is being mapped into your um, tablet. Right now, as you can see, my tablet is mapping the whole screen. Down below, we have the tablet itself. And here is going to show what kind of tablet you're using at the moment. In this case, I'm using the XP Pen Deco 3, which has this wheel and has six different buttons, which we can assign different shortcuts to them. Um, down below, we have the X, Y direction, width and height. These parameters here, are affected by these uh, other parameters down below, which is max active area, display ratio, and set work area. Once you go to max active area, it simply is going to allow your tablet to display on a whole screen. When you go on display ratio, it allows you to manually um, uh, set up which display ratio you want it to be. And set work area, it allows you to customize and set up the working area that you want. For instance, if you work on the phone, you can adjust this by putting 200 here for the for the width. And here on X and Y, it allows you to drag this in the different locations. And that way you can have only this part of the screen being affected. And then you can select it as a set work area. Now I'm going back to max max active area because I want to use uh, the pen for the whole area. And now you have these angles right here. These angles allow you to use your tablet as a different mode, such as um, let's say such as a phone mode, phone or tablet mode. If you want to use as a left hand mode and then you toggle between these angles right here. So I, I know that for left hand is 180 degrees. Next, we have these express key settings. If you click on this uh, panel right there, you're going to have this express key settings window. And this window is where you can assign different uh, shortcut keys to your bottoms on your tablets. Just make sure that uh, um, you know the shortcut keys for you particular program. I know some shortcut keys for the shop, Photoshop. And also if you want to know where to get your shortcut keys for your Photoshop, you just come to your Photoshop. You're going to uh, edit and then you're going to come to shortcut, a keyboard shortcut, and you're going to click in here. And in here you can find all the shortcuts that you need for the Photoshop. You can have files, gonna give you, open you, and so on and so on. You can find all the shortcuts that you need for your Photoshop here. Or if you want to get shortcut much faster, you can just roll over the, the icon on the toolbar 
and it's going to open this window and this window is going to show you um, the shortcut function for that particular tool um, anyway let's go back to the express setting keys here on the express key settings we're going to insert show you how to insert different shortcuts first of all you need to add a program in here as you can see i have added a photoshop and illustration illustrator in order to add a shortcut program you're going to click on this plus sign and then on this select program windows you're going to locate your program that you want to import into express key settings by going to browse here on browse you're going to look for the application that you want to insert um, let's just say that um, for instance i want this you're going to click and you're going to open once you have opened that, it's going to come in here. It's going to appear in here. Once appear in here, you're going to click on the application icon. And once you click on the application icon, you're going to have these options now to insert different shortcut keys. You're going to come on this K2, K1, K3, and so on. You're going to click on the panel, the same function key. Uh, you're going to either choose one of these, which is brush, run the program or function key. Now the function key is where you can add shortcut keys. So select function keys. Here on the function keys window, you're going to skip the mouse function, which is basically allowed you bottom to interact as a mouse. For example, no action, middle, click, double click, left click, and so on. If you want to use that to scroll down, to scroll up, then you're gonna use this mouse functions. But in this case, we want to use shortcuts. So you just click on shortcuts to enable it. And then here you're going to uh, click on your keyboard to, you're going to select the symbols or the letters on your keyboard that uh, represent the shortcut on your program. Let's say we want to use brush. In this case, we can use B as a brush for Adobe Photoshop. And we're going to insert that. And then we're going to click OK. As you can see, now we have in here B that represents brush. And you can do the same to the rest of the, the bottoms. If you go here on the top, above the bottoms, there's this, these two text. One says shortcut keys, another one says dial. Click on dial. And here, you're going to insert shortcut keys for your dial. Now, the process is the same. You're just going to click on this panel that says keyboard and you're going to click on keyboard. And here on the keyboard, you're going first to name it. Let's say we want this to be a zoom. So we're going to call it zoom. And then the left side, we're going to add, let's say plus and minus is to zoom. I'm not so sure. I have to check out with the shortcut uh, keys on my Photoshop. And then you're gonna click okay. And now you have this function right here, zoom, which is plus and minus. Um, once you have all the applications in place, you can either click OK to accept them or cancel. And you can also export configuration and import configuration. If you have set up everything in place and you need to export, then you can just click export and import configuration and, that, and then click OK to accept all the changes. So I guess that's everything you need to know about the XP Paint. I hope that helps you. So if that helps you, please leave a like and comment and also subscribe to the channel. So thank you for watching and I see you on the next video tutorial.